to be a gray and tower alone on the sea. As you may know, I've experienced firsthand the impacts of the protests here in Chicago. And without getting into to a lot of details, I was indeed um, involved in a situation where I was uh, struck by a police officer um, in an unfortunate situation that, that took place on the 31st, as has been previously reported. It is a, a, an ongoing investigation. I have filed a, a complaint with COPA. Um, and so I, I actually am kind of going through the process that we, the police board, are typically called upon to, uh, to make decisions on. The death of George Floyd was both tragic and heartbreaking. As people watched the video of Floyd's, of Floyd's final moments, many were overcome with emotion, uh, as I was. This emotional response manifested itself in several days of protests, 10 days to be exact. Uh, Chicago police officers have been there to protect the First Amendment rights of those marching in neighborhoods throughout the city. Unfortunately, there were also those that saw these peaceful protests as an opportunity to steal and vandalize property. I must begin by wishing Happy Father's Day to all the dads and other father figures throughout Chicago. Uh, we need positive role models now more than ever. I want to thank all the men that go out every day and set a good example for our young people. Regarding case number 19, PB2967, is there a motion to find police officer Jose Velasquez guilty of engaging in an unjustified altercation and displaying his weapon while intoxicated and off duty and to suspend him from the police department for a period of 180 days? Is there a motion? So moved. And who is that? Is that Judge Sweeney? That was for the yes, record. That was, that was sir. For the record, that was Judge Sweeney. Is there a second? Second. Yes. Okay, John O'Malley with the second. I will now call on members of the board for their votes. Wolf. This is Paula Wolf. I vote against the motion. I vote to discharge the officer from the department. Crow. Aye. Edie. Aye. Flores. Aye. Montez. Aye. O'Malley. Aye. Sweeney. Aye. Zop. Aye. And I vote against the motion. I vote to discharge the officer from the department. Voting in favor of board members Crow. Edie, Flores, Montez, O'Malley, Sweeney, Zop, Vice President Wolf, and I are opposed. The motion passes. I will now call upon members of the public who signed up in advance to speak. Each speaker will be unmuted after I call his or her name. I'll tell you in advance, we have 26 speakers today, so we are going to have to stick very firmly to the two minutes. Uh, next speaker, Reagan Peabody. That that's me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Foreman. Uh, 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 first, I would like to say uh, hello to uh, Superintendent Brown. Superintendent Brown, I would say your resolve is beyond uh, reproach. If you can make it through this, you've been put into a firestorm, and that is not lost on the people of Chicago. You were put into a mess that we have never seen before. Second of all, I would like to congratulate um, the chairman and the co-chairman, Wolf, now, you're telling me this officer brandished a, brandished a weapon while he was inebriated, yet you're keeping him on the force. That is not a policy of violation. Tucking in your shirt, Rule 37, not identifying yourself to uh, any member of the public or any uh, uh, CPD employee on or off duty is a policy violation. That's a criminal violation. That man should be fired. I have video at disorderlyproductnews.com of officers urinating on buildings of Commander Spencer spitting on me when he was a lieutenant. He got two merit promotions because he couldn't p pass the sergeants, nor could he pass the lieutenant's exam. And he assaulted and battered me. And in the middle of an internal affairs investigation, right after Beck got rid of merit promotions, they put him up to commander. Without merit promotions, he would still be an officer. Now, I, I, I want to give my hope and, and, and trust into you, Mr. Brown. I understand that you've come into a firestorm that nobody's ever seen the likes of. But 
uh, Snelling, uh, the, the the man urinating on the building, uh, the people in 11 watched me get jumped by a mob because they don't like my reporting on disorderly product news. Now, uh, it, 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 the stuff I have on disorderly product news that I've caught officers doing, it pales. It makes the guy giving two fingers look like a nun. But that doesn't make the, 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 the news. So there's no uh, big... Uh, Bobby Rush scandal, but go to disorderly product news and see what's really going on on the streets. Thank you very much. Next speaker, CPD Transparency. Good evening. Um, we don't need a new cop academy. Uh, we need new cops. Uh, Rahm Emanuel and Ed Sisko were using the new cop academy for only one reason, re-election. Rahm and Ed sacrificed everything and everyone in their failed campaign. I've FOIAed some of CPD's training materials. They're written at a sixth grade level, maybe third grade. One very important question about CPD engaging with the community. Just as there are trained fighters, there are those trained in rational argument. CPD can't win these fights ever. How is CPD going to handle that truth now that there are cameras? We know how CPD handled it before cameras. Why does CPD insist all internal investigations be kept hidden, dragged out for years until the public grows forgetful? The consent decree has an inherent contradiction. The consent decree makes leading by example the byword for police reform. At his retirement press conference, Eddie Johnson said now the example had been set. He meant by him. He also said he was reading the book of Job when he decided to retire. Leading by examples an ancient idea, the Greco-Roman moralist taught it, and free competition of ideas is essential. The Greeks and Romans attacked charlatans. Charlatan was their term. If leading by example is the byword, CPD needs to stop attacking cameras in the First Amendment, and CPD needs to start attacking its many charlatans. There's a no-tell motel just north of CPD headquarters. Has anyone inquired why Eddie Johnson's wife was made commander? Don't build Rahm Emanuel's new cop academy. It's a monument to himself. His new cop academy was to make voters forget what he did with Laquan McDonald. If you want to reduce police misconduct, train a camera at them. Make that new cop academy spartan as hell. John Wooden is about as perfect a sports personality as anyone I've met in, in my 40 years of broadcasting. The man was a, was a sports Abraham Lincoln. He was a Winston Churchill. He was a scholar. He was a teacher. Plus, he was a good person. Wooden style. It was laid back. It was honest. It was direct. He can say so much with so few words. For instance, he used to say this, uh, be quick but don't hurry. It's about what is correct, not who is correct. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Do not mistake activity for achievement. Happiness begins when selfishness ends. He might have been more like a Methodist minister than a basketball coach. Born in the farm country of Hall, Indiana in 1910, John Wooden, despite some hard times in his family, grew into a shining example of what is best in middle America. A three-time All-American, he led Purdue to the 1932 national title. After 11 years as a high school coach and English teacher, and two more as head coach at Indiana State, Wooden landed at UCLA in 1948. Sixteen years later, the Bruins won their first national championship. Somebody asked me, you know, how come it took you so long to win a national championship? And I said, I'm a slow learner, but you notice when I learn something, I have it done pretty good. Wooden learned so well that he became known as the Wizard of Westwood, whose acquired magic rendered the Bruins all but invincible. The best coaching record in the history of, of basketball, 10 national championships in 12 years, 88 game winning streak, and maybe the best of all that no one talks about, 38 in a row in the tournament. He never scouted other team. He didn't believe in it. He was more concerned about what his team was going to do, that if they went out and played their game, they didn't have to worry about anything that the other team was going to do because they were so prepared to play against it. 
the first day of practice, he literally showed you, gentlemen, this is how we put our socks on. You know, we make sure there's no wrinkles, because there's wrinkles, you get blisters, and it affects your play. He knew to the precise second where we were supposed to be on the court and what he wanted to do instructionally. Wooden was so basic in everything he did, and you could break down film and you knew exactly what they were going to do, but you just couldn't stop him. John Wooden's on another cloud. I mean, everybody's, everybody else is looking up, and he's like some rain god. He's just raining down on them. But he's the best coach our country's ever produced. Having won more than 80% of his games, John Wooden stands atop the pyramid of America's best basketball coaches, not only for his victories on the hardwood, but for all the hearts and minds he won in the process. For him, uh, it was not necessarily uh, wins and losses, but how he affected young men's lives. Mr. Wooden had this triangle, this pyramid of all the qualities, character, fortitude, honesty, truth, and, and if you lived up to the pyramid, then you won games. Winning and losing was not talked about during the year. There may be a halftime speech that revolved around the vocabulary word enthusiasm or industriousness. He would attack the situation by dealing with some aspect of the pyramid of success. All the human values, all the personal characteristics that he preached to us that we would need in our life to be eventually successful, that's what the pyramid is all about. John Wooden is a very religious man, and, and, and in some ways he treated the game religiously. It wasn't just winning, that you really wanted to win the right way. You wanted your players to look the right way, and you wanted them to behave the right way. I think he's going to be remembered as the curator of the traditional values, the man who took all those one-room schoolhouse values out of Indiana, took them to a place, UCLA, this campus that was in ferment during the 60s, and somehow not just safeguarded them through that time, but was able to win championships. A careful man I must always be, a little fellow follows me. I know I dare not go astray for fear he'll go the self same way. I cannot once escape his eyes. Whate'er he sees me do, he tries. Like me, he says he's going to be this little chap who follows me. He thinks that I am good and fine, believes in every word of mine. The base in me, he must not see this little chap who follows me. I must be careful as I go through summer's sun and winter's snow because I am building for the years to be this little chap who follows me.